Hello everybody, this is Pastor David and it is Wednesday and I'm uh, real excited to be able to come to you as we do weekly. Uh, my friend Ken comes out and helps us with the production of this little message and I'm just uh, real excited to be able to, to come to where you are. Uh, you know, technology has, has uh, changed our lives in a, lot of, in a lot of ways and I think a lot of good ways. You know, you can, you can uh, come visit me now uh, on your phone. Or, uh, on your computer and, and uh, just gives us another opportunity to visit and catch up and communicate and be a part of your life. I think communication is a very, very important part of church. And sometimes I know historically maybe people feel like they're just not really included or they don't uh, have all the announcements or they don't have all the information. And uh, Boy, we, we here at the Community Church of Mount Pleasant, we want you to feel a part of everything that's going on here. So this gives us another opportunity, uh, middle of your week, to check in with us and, and uh, we'll post these and, and uh, you can check in and, and uh, hear what's, uh, what's going on here at our church. And, and uh, another reason that's, that's really a good thing is because of the way that God is blessing our church. Uh, I, I can't even tell you how much we're growing in so many areas and so many ways here at uh, the community church. Uh, Sunday was an amazing day. Uh, we had 150 people here, which was the first time that we've ever hit that, that level as far as our attendance goes. And, and uh, I'm, I'm just amazed at how uh, our church is growing. And, and you know, uh, numerically is not the only way that we're growing. That is, a, that is a way to measure our growth. It is one of the ways to measure our growth. But we're growing in so many other ways. Uh, There's so many... Uh, people that are that are becoming involved in our church and in our ministry in so many different ways and and I mean almost weekly uh, there are people coming to this campus uh, during the week to, to pray and help and serve and and be together and and uh, we we talked Sunday night at our prayer and planning time about starting some Bible studies and we talked about some different times and and we're going to just offer uh, more opportunities for people to be together and that's what a church does. That's what a family does. And that's what Acts 2 was all about. It was about being together and having all things in common. So uh, God is adding to our church literally weekly. <coughs> it's just really fun and exciting to be a part of that. So I want, want to catch you up on a couple things and then we'll, we'll uh, get into our devotional thought for today. Um, this Sunday is sermon number four in our Elijah series. There are six parts to this. This will be number four. Last week we kind of had an exciting time because we talked about fire and rain. And we went to Mount Carmel with Elijah and, and we saw him challenge the uh, prophets of Baal. There were 450 of them and man, he wore them out. I mean, he embarrassed them. In fact, there was a point where they were dancing around and trying to do all this thing to, to call on their God, which was the God of Baal, and, and of course, the God of Baal didn't show up because he's not alive. He's not real. And, and uh, our friend Elijah was kind of making fun of him. He said, where's your God? What's wrong with your God? Which is, uh, I told you before, Elijah is an audacious guy. So Sunday was fun. And, and so a huge victory for Elijah. And, and, the, and the children of Israel realized that the God of Israel, the one true God, the God of Elijah, is the true God. And so... Uh, the people were beginning to turn back to the true and living God. And this week, we're in 1 Kings chapter 19, and I'd like to challenge you to read that chapter. We're going to see a, a little bit of a turnabout, a change of events in Elijah's life. And uh, I think it's going to be pretty practical for us as we, as we study this guy, this, this uh, outdoorsman who was a, a powerful prophet of God. So this coming Sunday, I'm excited about it. It's going to be good. Sunday nights, as usual, our youth group meets, and we meet for prayer and planning, and uh, just have a great time here at our church. So thanks for that. A couple things coming up. You know, it, uh, incredibly, it's November. We are in November. Uh, I believe this is the 4th of November. That's incredible to me. And So what that means is we're heading into the holidays, which I love. Okay, I'm, I'm a holiday guy. Um, I, I'm... I have to confess that I've already had some Christmas music on. I know, I know, but just just deal with it because I love Christmas. I think we, as Christ followers of all people, have more to celebrate than the world, than anybody. 
and, and uh, I like to make Christmas last as long as I can. But let's not skip Thanksgiving, okay? Let's, let's, let's move into Thanksgiving here in November. And so we're talking about being thankful and grateful for many, many blessings that God's given us as individuals as well as the church. So we're going to be working on some things in the holidays that you're going to love. Um, I believe uh, November 29th this year is, is our Thanksgiving weekend, and we have a special service here planned. We have special music. We've already contacted a special musician who's going to be with us to, to help us. We're going to have a Thanksgiving Day communion on that day. So uh, if you've never experienced communion together with the body of Christ, this is, this is a really special time. And so it's a time of reflection. And I'm excited about November 29. Uh, it's going to be a great day. Lots of other things that are going on. Um, it, we, we're starting to get to think about Christmas. And uh, so we have several things planned for Christmas. We have our Mount Pleasant Christmas Parade, which will be December 12. And we'll, we'll want everyone to be a part of that. Uh, we also have uh, uh, Christmas fruit bags this year that we're going to put together. We're going to assemble them and, and give them to our church family and provide them to, to, uh, for, for us to go out and give them to people in the community that perhaps uh, aren't as blessed as we are so that we can be a blessing to our community. And so just, just some neat things. Our ladies are meeting Wednesday nights and they're, they're doing several things. They're, they're learning how to make wreaths. And they're learning about cards, making cards, and just really having a fun time together for our ladies. And, and uh, there are just a lot of neat things. I believe November 20, the ladies have a trip to Billy Graham Library, which is going to be a, a special time. Um, December 5 is, uh, is going to be our ladies' Christmas brunch, I believe. And the ladies are working on that, and they're going to introduce a program called Secret Sisters. And what that is, it's a caring ministry within the church. It's where we can have a partner that we, we are encouraged to, to communicate with all year long and be a part of their life. And so these ladies have all that worked out. Uh, just, just a lot of neat things that, uh, that the Lord has planned for us. And, and December 2nd, we're kind of going to have start decorating for Christmas. So that morning, I believe that's a Wednesday, uh, all who can are invited to come out and, and start working on Christmas decorations for our church. So I, I love the holidays, and uh, they're here. So uh, let's start to get ready for that as a church. Um, I want to talk to you today, and this is the final um, message that we preached way back when we started our church. And we were talking and, and communicating to you, to our church, about what does it mean to be a church member. And uh, this is kind of the, the last message that I preached out of that series and uh, this one, I, I want to talk to you about the gift of church membership. And, and there's, there's kind of two ways to look at church. There's a lot of ways to look at it, but, but church membership, being a member, being committed, being a part of the team as far as being a church member. And, and there's a couple ways to look at that. One way is, well, you know, uh, I, I've got to be there. I'm a church member. I kind of need to, to uh, do my duty. And, you know, I'll show up and, and, and hit the clock and do my time. I hope that is not your opinion of church attendance or church membership. It's not a chore. It's a gift. Having a church family to be a part of is not a task. It's not something to check off your list. It is a gift and a very wonderful, special blessing from our Heavenly Father is to be able to be with the church family. And, and so I really want you to understand the significance and, and really what it means to be a church member. And, and so I'm, I'm just, that's what I want to talk about today. And we'll look at a couple passages, but, but we want to talk about that today. And, and, and I want to start by saying there's, there's two specific special gifts that we see from the New Testament that God has planned for us. And I need to, to make this uh, distinction as we talk about these gifts that God has given us. The first gift is really uh, the primary gift that we receive from God. It's foundational. And the first gift is God's gift of salvation to us. I, I think it's very, very important that we have clarity about the gift of salvation. And, and by salvation, I mean the fact that we can become children of God 
so that when we die, we can be with God forever. That's what we call salvation. And, and uh, we, we start with that gift. Before we talk about church or church membership or anything else, we start with the gift of salvation. And I'm, I'm concerned, oftentimes people will come to our church and they will, they'll say, you know what, we're interested in being a member of your church. And so I always try to, to uh, set aside a time to sit down and meet with that family. And I, I want to make it clear to you and to anyone who is interested in becoming a part of our church, do not confuse joining a church with your salvation experience. I really, really want you to be clear with that. Do not be confused into thinking that my church membership equates to my salvation. Because I'm going forward and joining a church and becoming a part of a church, therefore I'm going to heaven. That's my ticket to heaven. We must understand clearly that there's a distinction between joining a church and joining the family of God. It's imperative that we as pastors communicate clearly the gift that God has planned for us that we call salvation. It's not church attendance, church involvement, doing good things, joining a church or any kind of an organization. That's not what it means to become a child of God. You see, because becoming a child of God is a gift. It is a free gift. You are not able to purchase your salvation. You are not able to earn the gift of salvation. I, I really, you know, I guess I, I may overemphasize that. I don't think you can overemphasize the, the, the clarity of knowing that salvation is a gift. It's free. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. It's a gift. A gift, if you get a gift for your birthday or a gift for, for Christmas or someone comes up and says, you know, I have something special for you. I have a gift for you. You don't earn that. You don't purchase that. It is given to you freely. So before we conclude by talking about the gift of church membership, we start with God's gift of salvation. And, and I, as I talk about salvation, I want to take a couple of steps and, and walk us through that process. The first thing you need to know about the gift of salvation is that all have sinned. Romans 3.23 in the New Testament, the writer Paul clearly states to us that all of us are sinners. You know what a sinner is? It's one who sins. Guess what? Pastor Dave is a sinner because I sin. I don't want to sin. I don't plan to sin. I hope I don't sin, but inevitably I will because I'm a sinner. Little children are beautiful and wonderful, but guess what? They grow up to be little sinners, and then they get to be bigger sinners. And at some point they realize, <coughs> wow, I'm, I'm lost. I, I have no hope. I need help. And that is the basis for understanding the gift of salvation. To understand that you and I and everyone has sin. We, we, we fall short of God's perfection and God's glory. So first thing I want you to understand is that you and I are all sinners. But, and that's not good news. Because that sin has separated us from an almighty, holy God. God cannot sin. It is not in His nature to sin. He's holy. He's pure. And, and so our sin separates us from a holy God because He can't look on sin. He can't be a part of sin. So that's not good news. But there is good news. Romans 6.23 says that God has prepared a gift for us. That gift is, is eternal life. And it, is, it comes to us through the person of Jesus Christ. God the Father who's perfect created us. He loved us so much. He wants to be with us today, tomorrow, and forever. And, and in order to accomplish that, He had to make a way to atone or pay for our sins. We can't pay for our sins. But God the Father, who loved us, made a way. That way is through the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, 
I am Jesus. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Listen. No man comes to the Father but by me. Jesus is the only way to God the Father. Now, that's a little bit countercultural today because the world we live in is, is kind of telling us that, oh, there's a lot of ways to heaven. There's a lot of ways to God. Uh, you know, we, we just all kind of need to coexist. There's, there's many different beliefs and religions, and, and there's a lot of ways. We just all need to get along, and, and, and one day we'll all be together in heaven. That sounds great. The only problem with that is it's not true. I want to declare to you today, my friends, there is only one way to God, and that is through His Son, His only Son, John 3.16, His only Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus came here to the earth, and He became our sin for us. He took our sin, and He died. He had to. It was, it was necessary for <coughs> Jesus to die to pay for my sins. So the bad news is we're all sinners. Little sinners, big sinners, old sinners, young sinners, fat sinners, skinny sinners, we're all sinners. But God has provided a way for us to be saved through His Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus became sin for us. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says that. And John 3.16 says that as well. Well, if that is true, and there is a way for me to get to God, and it is through Jesus. How do I do that? The Bible tells us in Acts 3.19 that it is necessary for us to repent. Do you know what it means to repent? That means to change your mind. It means that you're going through life one way, and you realize, uh-oh, I'm lost. I'm a sinner. I'm not able to atone for my sins and for my sinful thoughts and my sinful actions. And, and I, need, I need something different to happen in my life. So you're going through life and you stop and you become aware of your lostness and your hopelessness. And you realize Jesus is the way. He's the truth. He died on the cross. He paid my way. And you change your mind about life and yourself and your sins and Jesus. And, and you stop and you repent. You change your mind and you change directions. And you acknowledge and you, you, you come before a holy God and say, My God, I'm lost. I declare my lostness to you. My dependence, I declare that to you. And, and I, I understand in my mind, that, and I understand that Jesus died and you made a way for me. And I also acknowledge that in my life, and I want that to be in my life. I want Jesus to be my payment, my way. And I accept that. That's what it means to repent. You change directions. You're heading toward hell in your lostness. And you stop and you become aware of Jesus Christ and what He did for us on the cross. And you give your life to Him and you accept that free gift and you turn around and let Jesus change your life. That's the gift of salvation. And then, uh, lastly, Ephesians chapter 2. You know what? I want to read that for you. I, I want to take a minute and read Ephesians chapter 2. This is a familiar passage, but, but you need to... You need to hear me read this. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, and, and I, I wanted to just kind of quote it, but I want to read this to you. Listen to this. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that's why we the term, are you saved? This is It's a biblical term. Are you saved? And, and this is what it means. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is not of you, Salvation does not come from within you. Well, just reach down in yourself and we're all good. No. Sounds good, but it's a lie. There's no good in me. Salvation is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. It's free. It's a gift. Here, he says, take it. It's salvation. It's free.
Verse 9 says this, It's not of works, lest any man should boast. It's not anything man can do because we brag about it. And we would get haughty and say, Look what I did. It's not of works and there's nothing you can do. It's all through Jesus. That, my friend, is salvation. And that is where church starts. That's where our relationship with God starts, with our salvation. And our choice and our decision to accept the free gift that God has for us. That's where it all begins. So do not confuse being a church member with your process of becoming a Christian. Church comes after you accept the gift of salvation. Through Jesus Christ. Now the second gift as I close today. I want to talk about the second gift. And that is a very special gift that God has given us. Through our church. Your church is a gift. It's not a chore. It's not something that I have to do. You don't have to go to church. Let me say this. And this may sound a little bit uh, heretical. You don't have to go to church to go to heaven. The Bible teaches that clearly. But church is a gift that God gives to those of us who were in the body of Christ. We can be together as a family. You know what? When you become in Christ, when you get saved, you'll want to go to church. Your, your attitudes will change. And, and you'll want to be with other believers. You'll want to hear the Bible and hear the preacher and serve the Lord. So the church is the gift that God gives you after you become a Christ follower after your salvation. It's a gift to be treasured and anticipated and enjoyed. Church is for your pleasure and for your enjoyment. So please understand. And, and at our church, we want to have fun at church. We want to enjoy church because church is a gift. It's special. And I love our Sunday mornings because it's just fun. We laugh. And, and we, we just enjoy each other. We have a good time. There are two kinds of, two, two, two areas within the church. One is the universal church, the body of Christ, the church. There's a church in Russia. There's a church in Cuba. There's a church all around the world. Wherever Christians are, there's a church. We are part of that universal church, that body of Christ. But the second part the New Testament talks about is the local church. The local church. We're not a part of the church in Russia or Cuba. Or, or Alaska. We're part of this church here in Mount Pleasant. This is where we live. This is our community. This is our county. This is where we go every week to be with our family. The local church. And so, understand, we're part of the big body of Christ, the big church. We're also a part of this local fellowship yes. called the Community Church of Mount Pleasant. And, and it's very exciting. God wants you to be a part. Now, let me make this statement. It is invalid to claim membership to the universal church alone. You need to be a part of a local church family right here. God does not want you to be an orphan. He wants you to be a part of the family. And then I, I want to I close with this. I want you to understand salvation is the greatest gift and it's free. And God wants you to have it today if you don't. The local church is a gift. And God wants you to have it today. You, you, you know, when you attend a church and you love a church, you serve and you give, you ought to join the church. You ought to become a member. And you ought to make a statement, put the jersey on and say, I'm here. This is my family. I want to be a part of this part of Christ. And so that's what it means. Let me, let me close by giving you this, this final pledge that we made as a church. This, this was the last pledge, and, and this is beautiful. It, it, it really sums up uh, what we taught about God's local church. And so this is the pledge that we made. And, and it was a beautiful thing. After this message, the sixth message we did about Acts 2 and, and, and the, the true local church, the body of Christ, we, we invited the congregation to come forward publicly and become members, official members, of this church. They were considered charter members. I, I believe we had 36 charter members that first day that we really asked everyone, okay, now you've learned about church membership. You've learned about what it means to be a part of the family of God. Now I'm going to give you the opportunity to apply that and publicly say, I'm in. I want to be a part of that church. I want to be a member of that church. We quoted this pledge together. 
and, and we have become a family. Since that time, we have had over 40, almost 50 additional members to the church, and we now have over 80 members of the Community Church of Mount Pleasant. And, and I'm, I just I celebrate that. I'm, I'm honored to, to be a part of that family. Here's the pledge. I am a church member. This membership is a gift. When I received the free gift of salvation through Jesus Christ, I became a part of the body of Christ. I soon thereafter identified with a local body and was baptized. And now I am humbled and honored to serve and to love others in our church. I pray that I will never take my membership for granted but see it as a gift and an opportunity to serve others and to be a part of something much greater than any one person or member. That was the way we summed up our study on church membership. That's what it means to be a member. So I would encourage you, number one, make sure you have received the gift of salvation before we even talk about church membership. The free gift that God has for you through Jesus so that you can be in heaven forever. After you do that, you need to follow Christ and be baptized. That's a public display of your obe obedience and willingness to follow Christ. After that, you become a member of a local church. And you become a part. And you serve and you love and you enjoy the family. You're not an orphan. You're part of the body. That is God's will based on the New Testament, the gospel of Christ. That's God's plan for you. Thank you for visiting with us, and I'm, I'm really thrilled about your being a part of our church. Perhaps you're listening, and you've never been to our church. Wherever you are, be a part of a Bible-preaching, Christ-following local church. We'd love for it to be here. God bless you, and thanks for letting me visit with you today.